we are on episode three of our motherhood series with an episode that I am calling Love Your Children Well. Now that seems like it's a super easy, simple thing to do, but actually not always. (laughs) In fact, if you've had children, you know there are many times that they are extremely unlovable, but we're not going to talk just about that. What we're really going to talk about loving your children well. Hey, it's Amber, wife, mother, type A child of God. Here are little things we look at everyday issues from a biblical perspective with one simple goal, to know and love God more. Thanks for listening. I hope you're enjoying little things. I love having you here. I just wanna remind you that there are several other podcasts available at Time of Grace. Pastor Mike Novotny has his weekly sermons, which are phenomenal. Dr. Bruce Becker takes a deep dive into the Bible each week with Bible threads. Christian educator C.L. Whiteside brings relevant truths and topics to light in his non-microwave truth. And Pastor Jeremy Maddock has Bible breaths, which is about the basics of the Bible and helps you walk through some of the more basic things that you want to know as a Christian. If you want to find any of these, go to timeofgrace.org slash podcast, and you'll have more than enough to listen to every day. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is how, if you have more than one child, how easy it is to compare siblings and why that's a problem. So if you have more than one child, you know that typically they don't necessarily have the same personality. In fact, it's a pretty well-known thing that the firstborn and the secondborn are typically pretty opposite. Sometimes they're very much alike. I know a family that the first two are very driven, the second two are more laid back. But, um, you know, for a lot of us, number one and number two are very, very different. And we run into a lot of problems when we compare them. You know, when... We say to one child, why can't you be more like so-and-so? Um, that really sends the message that we don't think that they're good enough and that their brother or their sister is better and somehow um, loved more because they are more of the characteristics that we like. Listen, it's taken me too long to realize that God decides and determines all the characteristics and the traits for each of our children. And he doesn't make mistakes. So if he decides that a child is going to be driven, it's because that's the characteristic or the trait that they need for whatever it is that God already knows they're going to do. Whereas if they're more laid back, it's because God knows that trait is going to serve them very well. My husband is extremely laid back. I am extremely driven. It is a wonderful complimentary thing because you don't want two people who are very, very driven. I would burn myself out. I already would have burned myself out if it wasn't for my husband saying, you know, you need to take a break or maybe you shouldn't work as much, Amber, or um, sit down and watch a movie with me tonight. And um, on the same token, he wouldn't get as much done if I wasn't, you know, sort of telling him hey, have you thought about doing something with that weed patch in our backyard? Or have you? <laughs> were you going to do something with that motorcycle you brought home and put in the driveway? Or, you know, it, it works both ways so that we both, um, you know, sort of help each other out with what they want. But it's the same with our children. To compare does so much damage. Our, our children have different um, purposes. They all do. They all have different um, characteristics that are going to serve them so well. And they're all so unique. And I've learned to really appreciate that in my children. But I don't know that I always appreciated it when they were young. Especially, you know, so often we, we just love and praise the child who, you know, goes and picks up or does what we ask them to do. And The thing is, is that we don't always see the heart behind them doing it. So we might notice that they're 
they're doing something that we told them to do, but we don't notice them grumbling, you know, underneath their breath, or we don't notice what they said behind our back when they're done picking up. Not saying that they always did that, but I'm just saying to um, praise the child who has the characteristics and the traits that we want is a little short-sighted because those other children also have a lot to offer. And it's so important to recognize the good in all of our children, whatever it is. And you know, some of my children who are not super enthusiastic in terms of um, being the first to hop off the couch and help or whatever, they're also the kindest. So, you know, the my children who are super driven will also be the first to roll their eyes if I don't feel well and ask for a drink of water. Whereas my not so driven children, you know, will come and say, how are you doing, mom? Can I get you anything? And that kindness carries them a long way. So it's so important that we don't compare our children to another sibling. That that can just do way, way too much to hurt their feelings and to really knock them down. So we don't want to do that. Um, the other thing we don't want to do is compare our children to our expectations. So what we want for our children, we've heard so many stories about this. I know, you know, if you've lived long enough, you hear about the child who's um, dad was a football player. And so he always wanted a football player, but his child wasn't any good at playing football or mom was a great singer and put uh, so-and-so in choir for years and years and years. And they're just, they're just, they just don't have what their parents have. And our expectations can get in the way of a lot of things with our children. If we are not super, super careful. Before I had a child who had a learning disability, I said some pretty foolish things. I said things like any child can succeed in school if their parent just works with them. Well, God made sure that I knew that wasn't necessarily the truth. Our school system is definitely bent and geared towards those who are able to read and write well. So if you are dyslexic, that's a major problem. And all of our our school is really about reading and writing. You're taking notes, you're writing, you're taking tests, you're so if you struggle with the reading and the writing, um, school is not necessarily going to be your thing. But this is the thing. This is what I've learned about that. I have a child who did not do well in school. And when I say did not do well in school, that is an understatement. So if you've had any, if you've had children who have failed some classes and you need some encouragement, you just come and talk to me. And I'll go into further detail with this. I'm not going to say a lot right now because I'm going to preserve the dignity of said child. But this is what I want to tell you. The child who did struggle all throughout school also is brilliant in some ways that school would never recognize. And so thankfully, thank God, I recognized the brilliance in this child early on because school was not a good thing. It was a terrible thing. But because I saw that this child had some amazing abilities and I would tell this child all the time, you are a genius in your own way. Um, it really wasn't a big deal to us when school didn't really work out. So, um, but the point being that, you know, when I had this child, when I had my first children and, you know, until I had gone through this experience, I really really thought my expectation was any child can do well in school. Shouldn't be a problem. And um, like I said, so many of our expectations are unrealistic and unachievable for our children. But we don't know that until they grow up and we see what they're dealing with. And, and then that's when we need to really change our expectations. You know, my expectations, um, having children even, when my firstborn was was born, she was a pretty good baby. I mean, she just really struggled. And, and, and I hesitate to even say, I, I don't actually like that. You know, we say she was a good baby because she slept and because, you know, she didn't have any problems. When my son was born, he caught a cold in the hospital 
And two weeks, you know, after we went in uh, at a two week checkup and they realized he had broken his collarbone during birth. So was he a good baby? No, he was in pain. He was struggling with a lot of things. Does that make him a better or a worse baby than a baby who sleeps, you know, more or is or is smiling or happy? No, it means the circumstances surrounding his birth were drastically different than the circumstances around the birth of my daughter. So to say, oh, this is a good baby or he's a bad baby or, you know, she's really good and he's not or he's, I mean, you know, each child is different and it's a matter of expectations. But one thing that I did really struggle with after my second was born is that I had that expectation that having two children was going to be harder than having one. I did not have the expectation that my daughter would sleep all night long and my son would be up all night and then he would sleep all day and vice versa. I did not have the expectation that I would only get a few hours of sleep and how hard that would be. And so um, because I did not have that expectation and I really thought, well, whatever happens, you know, we'll just deal with it and it will be okay. I was not very happy when um, the first six weeks after my son was born, when I wasn't sleeping and things were kind of crazy. But we run into a lot of problems when we put our own expectations on our children and we think that somehow um, they should be what we want them to be and they should do what we want them to do. If you've had children for any amount of time, you know that those things are pretty quickly blown out the window because children have a lovely mind of their own and they will decide um, to do whatever they want, whether you want them to or not. So, I mean, we have some say in that, of course, I'm not saying to just let them do what they want, but you know, just because you want a football player doesn't mean you're going to get a football player. That person might be a wonderful musician. And wouldn't that be a blessing? It's just about recognizing that it's not about us and that God knew what he was doing when he created each of our children. And regardless of our expectations, we need to just love each child and, um, you know, really help them to flourish and do whatever God created them to do. I have told my children many times that I'm sad that God didn't, you know, give me four people who love to clean the house nonstop, but I mean, it probably has something to do with me and how I raise them. But um, I think then the last part is the last comparison is is really maybe the most um, difficult because of social media. We see what everybody else's children are doing. And it is so easy to compare and see that, oh, my word, so-and-so's two-month-old is sitting up. My two-month-old doesn't do anything so-and-so's 18-month-old can, you know, say full sentences. My 18-month-old is still babbling. Their three-year-old is reading full books. My three-year-old doesn't know their letters. I mean, it's just social media just does such a wonderful job of comparing children. And that can be so bad for the children. In fact, I made a point Thank God I made a point when my children were young. I just didn't put anything about them on social media. If if they were on social media, it was almost always because someone else tagged them in a picture. So, but this was my thought for, for that. So if they won that day in the cross country meet or the basketball tournament or whatever, there was somebody else who lost. And why should I, you know, put that my child is so much greater because they came out on top this time. And um, there were just as many failures as there were victories. And if I wasn't going to put, you know, my child bombed the spelling bee, why would I put my child, you know, finish first in cross country? So I just, I, I think it's really important that we don't compare our children to other children. Because Everything is different. Um, Their family life is different. Priorities are different. The traits, again, characteristics, abilities that God gave them are so drastically different than other children. And you just have to run your race. 
And that's what you need to teach your children because that is going to be a lifelong thing for all of us. For all of us, we can constantly be looking at the neighbor or some of our friends or whatever. You know, I still struggle to this day to put things on any of the social medias because I feel like every time I want to put a picture of my husband and say something like, you know, he is such a kind man or whatever, I think about my friends who are struggling in the marriage in how much that hurts when you see that somebody else is um, doing well when, when you're struggling. And the point is this, that we've had our seasons of struggle. We've been there. I know. I understand. So you know what I do when I really, really am appreciating my husband? Tell him. He's the only one that needs to know. Same with our children. Man, if you see something that they're really good at, tell them, but also thank the Lord. Teach them to thank the Lord for the things that they're good at. We don't want our kids to get proud. All through the Bible, the proud or isn't the proud person is in opposition to God. He blesses and he raises up the humble. So when our children are good at something, it's just a good habit to get into. They won the race. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving me the ability to run. Thank you for helping me to feel good today. There are many children around the world who cannot walk, who cannot run, and who are battling cancer and can't get out of bed. When they do well on the test at school, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me the aptitude to learn. Thank you for helping me to have a good night's sleep last night, for being in a warm bed and having breakfast this morning, for the food in my cupboard. Thank you for allowing me to learn and help me to use all of my mental ability to serve you and your kingdom. Show me how to do that. That's a much different thing than posting it on social media or putting on the bumper sticker that says, my child is an honor student. Um, that's, that's pride. Instead, let's teach our children that whatever they're good at, use it to serve the Lord. Thank the Lord. Um, I was sitting at my daughter's uh, orchestra concert last night, and she's in ninth grade. So she's at the, the bottom concert, sort of the very basic concert, right? And then there was another concert that was just phenomenal. And then they brought the honor students out. And the honor orchestra was, you know, just phenomenal. And I sat there and I was watching these high school students play. And I was thinking, oh God, like, please put faith in these people's hearts, put Christians in their lives, help them to turn to you. Because this would be fabulous if they would use this ability to praise their creator. So, Instead of comparing our children to each other and instead of comparing them to our expectations, especially when they are not exceeding our expectations, but when they're falling uh, flat of our expectations, and instead of comparing them to someone down the street or someone in their school or someone on social media, just appreciate your children for who they are that God decided you would be their parent. Now think about that. God doesn't make mistakes. He put that particular child in your family for a purpose and a reason. He chose you to be their mother. Just enjoy that and appreciate that. Love who they are and learn to love them well. Because when you do that, not only will you appreciate them more, but you will encourage them to be who God called them to be and to be all that they can be for God in his kingdom. This has been Little Things, because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. Please know that everything you do, from encouraging us to sending in your dollars to praying for us, it's all appreciated and noticed. We need you. And we count on you for your support to help us continue in this ministry. Thanks so much and God bless.